Uh, good evening, everyone. So happy to see all of you here. Um, so, um, do you, would you like to do roll call? Director Ferris? Here. Director Moran? Here. President Henry? Here. Director Swan? Here. And Director Pulse was excused at the, the uh, previous roll call. Yeah. So, um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Uh, yes, yes, I'll refer to Council Nichols. Okay, so um, Rick and Stephanie brought to my attention that um, early this week CSDA sent around an email raising some legislative issues on which they were requesting prompt attention um, by member agencies, including the district. Uh, and in particular, on SB 13, which just passed the legislature on Friday and is going to the governor for signature, CSDA is asking its member agencies to submit letters requesting the governor to veto that bill, and the reason is that it could cut into the revenue of districts such as this one by limiting your ability to impose connection um, and capacity fees related to um, the addition of ADUs, kind of, I think you described kind of granny units to existing yeah, homes right. within the district. So um, because of that, the importance of that issue for the district, um, staff recommended and asked me to help with um, requesting that the board uh, make the necessary findings to add this to the agenda for tonight's meeting to approve a letter to send to the governor for uh, CSDA's template. So, um, and I can answer any questions you may have about that. Uh, what I would ask is um, for a motion uh, with the necessary findings that I will read to you in, in just a moment um, that would make, that would add this to the agenda. It could be the end of the agenda. We don't have to do it up front. It could be whenever uh, you like. But, um, so let me just pull up the necessary findings. Um, so the, we would need a vote of four, through all four directors present, on a motion to approve the late addition to the agenda uh, on the basis that the need exists to take action immediately, um, which it does because the governor could sign the bill into law any day, it's on his desk, so if we're going to submit something we need to do it right away, and second, that the need for action came to the attention of district staff after the agenda would was posted, and I can vouch for that. I've seen the email from CSDA <laughs> and the date this came to the district's attention after the Friday agenda posting. So, do we have a, a motion? Anybody at motion what she said? <laughs> I make a motion to add this to the agenda. Oh, you make a motion to add this to the agenda? Yeah. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Okay. Add it to the agenda. And yeah. I recommend doing it after general oral communications and any point thereafter. Say at the, um, the end of new business, so it will be become 11D. Okay. So we'll save the questions we have for that. So, so it would be, yeah, 11D. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, so oral communications. Um, at, sorry, Lois, point of order. We need to report an action statement in closed section. There was no action taken. So don't we need to report that? Oh, uh, yeah, I should have said there was no action taken in closed session. Sorry. Got carried away. <coughs> Keep me on the straight and narrow there. All right. So, oral communication. Um, we allow five minutes for oral communications. At this time, you uh, cannot talk about anything that's on the agenda. It has to be on items that are not on the agenda at this time. 
So, can I just ask a quick question? Yes. So, um, there's a, um, I've been asked by one of our committee members, the Laddoff committee members, to bring a couple of things to her attention since she couldn't be here. And it might fall into the category when you talk about committee reports, because it yes. involves minutes and it, things like that's that. That's where, yeah. yeah. Okay, then I'll wait until then. Yes. So, right. Lois, excuse me. Um, if there is a request to have something put on the consent agenda, or removed? Yeah, removed from the consent agenda. Should I have done that two minutes ago? No. Okay. No. no. Can I do that now? Yeah. No. Um, okay. When we get to the content, okay. like content, it's consent. a content agenda. Okay, thank so you. I'm not a mouth, no work. Okay. So, back to oral communications. Anybody have anything they want to say about something that's not on the agenda? Yes, Mark. Hi, Mark Lee from Bethel. Last, uh, at the last board meeting, we had some introductory discussion about water rates. Is that on the agenda tonight? No. Okay. Uh, there was a motion made at that time by Commissioner uh, Foltz about modifying or, or actually stabilizing the volumetric rate. There was no. There was no action. There was a minor bit of discussion. That wasn't uh, related. There was no motion. There was no motion. We understand that. But there was discussion. Yes. And uh, I'd like to uh, recommend that next time we have a meeting on the rate structure that it be sent back to finance committee if we could. And two, I would like to include uh, not only the volumetric, uh, discussion of the volumetric rate, but also on the fixed rate. Uh, and I'd like to have that discussion ensue at the Finance Committee, if we could, please. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, Cynthia from Felton. If you do that, if you have any discussion of rate structure, I recommend that you announce that to the public through the newspaper and announce when the Finance Committee meeting is going to take place so that anyone who wants to be involved can get involved there? Well, anything we discuss will be on an agenda, even in the Finance Committee, there's agendas. So, we don't just talk about things without letting you know we're going to do it. Okay. Sir Henry, to, in the future, folks would want to keep informed you can get on our agenda mailing list at no cost that you will receive all agendas for all committees and okay. meetings. Uh, okay. If you wish, if they wish. So to if yourself. you, Cynthia, yes. if you would like that, you can uh, talk to our secretary, either call her or maybe later tonight and ask that your name be added. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Yes, like I um, since this rate thing has come up, <clears throat> I just want to emphasize that although there are some people who can't pay their water bills, and and I think we should be sensitive to that. That I am very concerned that we base that we not base our rates on the ability of the poorest people to pay. Um, I I don't I, I don't think that this district is. Uh, wasting money. I don't think that they are uh, cheating anybody. I think that the, the money that's being spent is it being spent well and it's very important that we take care of our water district and, and not have our income limited um, in that way. If, if our water is one of the most precious things we have, as much as clean air, we need clean water. More important than our cable bill or our television set or our phones, and I, I want us to value what we are getting. Thank you. Anybody else? Tell me just to um, add on to that. If um, if there are organizations that can assist people to to pay their um, their water bills too, yeah. we tell and we bills. point people. Anybody else? Yes, Nick. So. 
I'm such a terrible speaker in public that I actually printed out what I wanted to say, and I even made some extra copies. If anybody wants a copy, maybe for uh, Director Pulse, who's not here, but I'd be glad to give you guys those. So uh, you cannot approach the table. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. I'll just leave them here. I guess and maybe call me. Yeah. Like that. So you I'm can told, give it to Holly, but. I was told by Rick Rogers about five years ago that putting a liner to stop the constant leaking of the lower swim tank would make it necessary to replace the tank within five years. Necessary was the word he used. Because the liners caused the wood to dry rot faster. Rick said replacing was necessary, definitely within five years. And that's about five years ago, so where's the new tank? There is a telephone pole notice posted several years ago to expect excavation work on the swim tanks two years back. So where is it? These leaking, unstable, two small tanks were and still need to be a top-level priority for replacement. The swim tanks have been clearly insufficient as well as inefficient for way over a decade now. The population has risen up on that road a lot, and Scenic Way is a large neighborhood. I was severely disappointed to recently hear from the director that it's becoming the district's intention to delay the necessary upgrade of these two very old rotting tanks while putting us deeper and deeper into debt. Uh, what, an $8 million loan changed into a $10 million loan and it changed into a $14 million loan. I wonder how much the next one's going to be. I'm fine either way. Use my parcel or use the old one. But please stop with stalling tactics on the swim tanks. If the district is interested in my property because it's conveniently near to the small, steep, old site. My parcel is the flattest around on solid rock with easy access, plus it includes five spaces for parking. The entire project, including doubling the tank size, may be much easier and significantly less expensive on the new site compared to the old one. This might save the district hundreds of thousands of dollars and enable doubling the size of the tank compared to restrictive construction possibilities at the old site. I want to be sincere and clear about what will lead to the district obtaining this property. Here's what I suggest would need to happen. Darren said the construction and operating the tank could be done without harming the beautiful old growth of redwoods on the property, and I would need that in the contract as something that I could count on. Regarding the take from wildlife and decreased attractiveness to our neighborhood, a large tank on this field would cause. I would want that addressed by planting some native fruit, nut, and berry trees or bushes, and this would cost relatively little. This helps to compensate the wildlife as well as offset the decreased attractiveness, showing smart environmental stewardship and decent neighborhood consideration. Oh, I'm doing all right. The fence uh, required to go around the tank should be as close to the tank and as low in height as legally possible. This would permit availability of the remaining open space to wildlife, while it also decreases the negative appearance of a large and noticeable fence in our neighborhood. A tight and low fence also saves the district money, according to Rick. Any damage done to our narrow, switchback, overdriven, crowded road from, from or during construction would need to be fully repaired and fixed by either the contractor or the water district. Rick said the water district would need to dig up the street to put in a new line from the old site to the new one, or from the new one to the old one. I want assurance that if the street gets dug up, it will be resurfaced the full width and length of what was damaged. Uh, not, not just filled in with a little bit of coal patch that's going to sink in on the spot where they did it and then it's going to mess up quickly. So our already bad road won't become worse because of damage during construction. I think that's reasonable and fair. All of those issues can be solved according to what I have been told. So that just leaves the appraisal in price. The district plans to use this parcel as a buildable site. So I would be willing to price it for what would be a buildable, very flat parcel with five parking spaces would sell for in our marketplace. I'll give you a good, at that, you know, at that level, I'm not looking to be greedy. I'm just looking to be fair to myself as well as the district. I will not sell it as an unbuildable parcel price because if you buy it to build a very big tank on it, the valuation should be based on that purpose of building on it as its official appraisal. The appraisal comps should be compared to what purchasing other 120,000 gallon tank sites cost water districts in this region. Even if you don't want it, I might be able to do this, even if you don't want it, please keep the, my, my parcel Please keep the promises you've made to start the bidding again for your old swim tank site promptly. And let's get moving on the long needed and long promised swim tank replacement. The time to do it, according to the water district, was very many years ago. So please stop with the delays on the leaky with tilting pier posts and rotting swim tanks. That's my rant, and I did it with seven seconds to go. So. Okay.
Anyone else out there want to talk? Uh, have anything to say that's not on the agenda? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, then moving on. What? Hi, I'm withdrawing my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, we're going to move on to unfinished business. Uh. <coughs> yes, we have a memo from Council, uh, General Council in Naples uh, regarding a creation of the Public Advisory Committee to make recommendations regarding the district administration's and operations facility needs. Okay, um, so this memo is an attempt to capture what um, the discussion was at the last time this issue came up before the board in terms of setting up a public advisory committee to assist the district with recommendations related to its administrative and operations facilities. Um, there is a resolution before you, number 8, uh, 1920, that if adopted would create the, the committee um, to have a term of um, a year from the date that the first committee member is appointed. Um, this is set up to create a five to seven uh, voting member committee, um, which wherein the members would be identified the same way as public committee members are for the district's other committees. Um, and there's a list of goals, uh, or rather there's a list of items that had been requested for the public advisory committee to address. And the resolution states that um, the committee should uh, make recommendations in the form of one or more concise written reports on, the call, on those items for which the district is seeking uh, public input. Okay. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen, seen this. Um, do, you, do you want to know what, what we're talking about here, uh, about what that committee would get? Okay. So part of the resolution says, do you want to say what, it, or you want me to? Look? Well, if you'd like, I mean, I can, I can give more okay. background. All right. Um, so, uh, it, there's a list A through M there. Right, and, and the district for some time has been, uh, has been looking to replace and make changes to the administration and operations building. Um, the administration building, I don't have that memo with me, but is quite old, doesn't meet the needs of the district. It has a lot of uh, efficiencies that are problematic. Uh, we're not ADA approved. There's a mold issue. There's storage issues, and, and we're just basically out of office space. Um, for some time, we've been looking uh, into the point that we purchased new property to to build um, a new operations and admin building to kind of collect all of our operations and administration to one site. Um, it became very expensive. A few years back, when the district abandoned moving forward on the purchase or on the construction of the two new buildings, um, the district is still operating out of across the street the admin building and this building. And at the uh, I guess it was the admin uh, committee meeting, um, we decided uh, the committee decided it's time that we need to move forward and suggested that we put a, a public uh, advisory committee together to review um, all of the different things, the history of the district facilities, the facility opportunities and constraints, the appraisal value of the district, uh, existing district facilities, the current and long-term facility needs, uh, including critical needs, uh, appropriate locations for the district, administrative headquarters and operations facility, key uh, issues, influence, facility design, consolidating repair material and equipment to one location, emergency response needs, fuel storage and environmental <coughs> concerns, bulk, bulk water sales locations, uh, size and design criteria for indoor space, including public meeting room if one is needed or for board of directors meeting and other functions, 
or whether to remodel or relocate, uh, remodel our existing administration uh, facilities or relocate, and then of course construction costs and estimates. Uh, a lot of this information has already been obtained over many years of uh, looking at doing this. It would bring all this information together and revisit um, the new facilities from, from A to Z basically and then come back and make a recommendation to the board on how to proceed and what the best, best location for the district would be. Where is the middle of the district? We have grown. We've taken on Lompico. We've taken on Manana Woods. We've taken on Felton. You know, what is the best location for the district? Um, those type of things will all be addressed. And then when I look at this as close to a year-long process of public meetings, uh, board meetings, uh, milestone meetings, uh, and as transparent as possible to avoid the problems we had last time where cost ran out of control and design ran out of control and we got to be a, a very political um, very political project. It doesn't have to be. I mean, we can use good common sense. What do we need? And, you know, do we, we don't do we need a, a separate boardroom that sits there empty. Uh, that had a million dollar price tag last time. Or can we make it a multi-purpose room like we do here now? All those types of things we will review. And we have a lot of this information already gathered by consultants in the past process that we'll revisit and bring out to the committee. That's kind of a quick and dirty background. But something needs to be done. The facilities are inadequate for our needs. Okay, board discussion. I have a question. I have a question. Um, it states that the committee will consist of five to seven voting members of the public. Is there any intention of having a board member on this committee, or is you? I don't believe there was. was. I, I believe it was strictly a public advisory from the public. And then it come to the whole board. I mean, we could. As we put this together, like a charter, we could say we want milestones brought back to the admin committee or milestones to the board. You know, I would think the board or at least committee would want to monitor progress and see you know, how we're going. And the board may want to give direction to say, like the previous board gave direction, we want to keep the headquarters on the Highway 9 corridor. Uh, we don't want to see it, you know, we want to see it on the bus route. You know, those were some parameters a long time ago. Things have changed with the internet and, and our district has grown. But the board may give us some direction and, and want to be, I would think the board would want to be involved in milestones, at least kept informed. Having been on the CAT committee that was formed back in 2014, um, I think one of the problems was we didn't have enough direction from the district and the board. Now, Jim Mueller was president at most of those meetings. Well, I'll be was, president at all of these meetings. Okay, that's what's going to I would think the department heads so will be very involved, you know, the director of operations will be there to talk about operations, obviously, 24 hour, all the requirements for operations, which is, will be excessive. And Stephanie, the director of finance, will be there, De Darren on engineering to tell you what, to, to tell the committee what is needed for the engineering department. I was just going to say that either somebody from staff or no, staff will be, be on the no, They will not be left your alone to fend for themselves okay. because we have a lot of information to propose and to show and to go over. I mean, field trips down to the, the facilities, um, different things. The staff will be heavily involved. Do we want to build that into the resolution to, to, to acknowledge that there will be some participation from staff at, at these meetings? Because right now it just looks like five to seven voting members of the public. Yeah. I'll refer to or Jim. do we want to leave you with the, the, the power to... As I understand it, staff essentially facilitates yes. all of the committee meetings, right. and this would be no exception. But I, I agree with that meet, the committee you were on. They were just turned loose, and there was not a lot of... We struggled for a while. Not a lot of direction. Um, yes, but staff plans to facilitate. Um, at least to present our side, we may not, obviously... We had disagreements. I, I think we had some lively discussion, um, but uh, staff will be heavily involved. Any other board members? Well, I've seen and heard a lot of discussion about the possibility of administration building for a long time. All right, and if we've learned some things from those attempts to do that, and we can move forward, that building's not getting in any better shape, and. Um, 
I would support moving ahead with this in the most transparent way that we can. Okay. See? No comment. No comment. Um, yes, this has been in the works for a very long time, but staff is always there to give guidance and, and information. And so I, I don't think that we need board members on that committee. Um, and that we, I, I mean, it'll just be automatic that staff will be there. So I'll go out to the public here. Anybody out there have something they want to say about this, uh, working on this project? Yes, Virginia. Well, question, um, not for me, but someone, uh, Barbara Springer, who's the owner of Satellite, she's interested in this committee, and she does this uh, for a living. Mm -hmm. So how does how do people find out about the committee and how do they get on and where the criteria for the members that kind of thing? I would think we'd advertise just like we do with all the other committees. Website probably put something in the, the local paper. Uh -huh. um, we we send out to uh, Holly will send out to her agenda list. Um, those are in the ways that we've done it in the past. Okay. And just one thing I'd like to add real quick is that I'm not anticipating that. Forming this committee and moving forward has a, a large price tag or have much of a price tag at all, other than the committee meeting and, and so forth. Maybe some staff overtime if we need somebody to do something, but I'm not anticipating a consultant or anything. We would come back uh, from a recommendation from this committee to the full board if something was needed that cost any, any type of money. So we're not planning on spending any money. Okay. Virgil? <clears throat> Uh, I, I support the idea of this, but um, how, how would you handle the case uh, where you have the committee um, confused about things that requires guidance from the board? How is that handled? Well, obviously case by case situation, and if it was something that you know, we couldn't settle from the committee, we'll have a, you know, someone will be elected chair, just like we have on our other committees. And if we couldn't work it out, we might take it back to committee for, for some guidance. You know, I'm not, there's no reason why we would stop any type of communications back to a committee or the board. We want to work this through and have everybody work together. So if we needed some, some, some guidance, we would come back probably to the committee or the board. Okay, that's fine as a general philosophy, but this is a legal document, and I'm wondering if that doesn't re need, maybe it doesn't, some sort of um, stipulation that, that the board is always available for recourse or that if, you know, there will be strategic or policy questions that need to be answered by board members, how, does, how is that typically handled? And should it be enumerated or should it not? Or, or is it just going to be, remain assumed? I mean, because I, I agree completely with your feelings but again, their feelings. Well, it seems to me that items can always be brought to the board that the committee is oh, okay. talking about. Who would bring those to the board? Maybe that, that's that, a, that, well. Maybe that would be a, a more accurate thing. Would, would this be the responsibility <laughs> of the uh, chairman of the committee or? You know, something like that. I guess you mentioned that there were there would be bylaws, or or um, um, that this is insufficient to establish the basic charter of the of the um, of this committee. And I was just curious. You you said there would be a chairman and maybe a vice chairman and stuff like that. And would it be their responsibility? Where is this further enumerated? What's it? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, this was that would be good. Written, this was written. <laughs> this resolution is written to refer to the sections of the board manual that provide guidance generally for the committees to the extent it's not otherwise specified in the resolution. So it would work the same way as the other district committees in the sense that the board manual says that they'll appoint a chairperson, um, and then the chairperson. Um, would typically be the person who, if desired, would make uh, committee reports. 
during the board meeting and um, would be the primary liaison with the district manager and or the board president, um, absent some other specific you know, direction or provision in the resolution, which there's not right now. I think that's what I was asking, but mm -hmm. poorly, sorry. Gray, I'm glad we answered. Uh, uh, Mark, you, uh, your hand back there. Mark Lee from Benlow. Having a, a strong background in urban environmental planning of almost 25 years, uh, I've gone through a lot of these study committees, and uh, it requires a lot of give and take and analysis, a very site requirements, doing an assessment, doing the economic analysis. But I, I want to make sure that uh, we don't completely uh, regurgitate the reports from and the data from the 2014 period. We can use that as additional data, but we need to kind of start from scratch on a lot of information. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other sites that may be more feasible, that could be leased or rented. There could be a, a, you know, a whole different uh, planet of different uh, alternatives that we still have not looked at uh, to serve the growing population and uh, water service needs of the community. Uh, so I would hope that in that committee we would have the ability to look at other alternatives, uh, including leasing, selling properties that are not necessary. <coughs> we do have a lot of land uh, that are sitting vacant that could be sold or built upon in the water district. I think there's one that's right across the street from uh, Rick Rogers' home, 70 acres, uh, but, but it's, it's up the hill. But what I'm saying is we have a lot of uh, vacant land along the Highway 9 corridor that can be re-examined. Not necessarily existing properties may be the, uh, the ultimate decision. Also, I, I would hope that we would get input from the downtown business community regarding uh, the possibility of maybe acquiring the building uh, next door uh, to the existing uh, headquarters and expanding that. Uh, you know, having asking the existing retailing um, a Mexican restaurant to relocate to uh, perhaps another location. There's all kinds of alternatives that we haven't really looked at. And uh, we would have to include the downtown business group for their parking requirements, etc. So I hope that we don't reinvent what occurred in 2014. Even though that's good information, I think we need additional information. We definitely need a year to look at this. And uh, so, in fact, there's a vacant lot across the street it's been available for many, many years that could be constructed on by selling another more useful property, maybe somewhere else in the community. So we need to look at all those alternatives. Thank you. We also, set, we, we I, also I, I wouldn't mind serving on that committee. Okay. We, we will be doing all those things that you said. I don't know where Rick Rogers lives, but I have a feeling it wouldn't be a good road to go down. Uh, and Nick, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was just wondering because I'm a veteran of those battles about the old, you know, Crowther's Palace or the campus boondoggle, and I remember some of you folks were involved with that too, and, uh, trying to prevent a large excessive amount of money to go towards things other than infrastructure. And here we are talking about doing that in the near future, and what, what I would think would be important how to present this to the public, when at the same time, for example, if tanks that have been put uh, top tier priority for replacement get put again on the back burner, and other things get put on the back burner because there's just not enough money, even though $14 million has just been borrowed. And with the price tag for the old one, uh, my understanding is, is that there's the Johnson property, I think it's called, is that the name of it, the Johnson property? And that, that actually, might be uh, a really good idea at a low cost, which the public would definitely support you saving them money, because you're going to need to borrow more money after you borrow this money, and we're just going deeper and deeper in debt. And I don't see the infrastructure getting through to the to the houses and the streets where the water is bubbling up from the, the mains. So uh, I wonder how you're going to do that. I mean, are you going to look at the same type of set of ideas, or are you going to maybe consider selling this place across the street? Putting the money from that sale into the Johnson property with maybe an addition on there and, and fixing up the parking a little it seems like a really good idea. It doesn't require a whole lot of building. It doesn't meet all your needs, but it's more uh, palatable to the public. 
So I would ask you to consider that the priority that a lot of the members of this board were elected on was the infrastructure. And I understand you need a place to do business. This has been working even though they don't like it, but I think the Johnson property is, is a much better solution than building something new. Thank you. We're going to be looking at all that. Don't worry. Okay, good. Uh, uh, tell me. Um, I think that it's a wonderful idea to engage the public, and so then it'll be a project that they're, you know, it'll be you're getting, getting the opinions of who you, the people that you serve. And um, I mean, maybe the Johnson property is a great idea, but I would really like to see a more central location to uh, the people that you serve. It's not Boulder Creek anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, so moving on here, do we have a resolution in front of us to move forward with this item? I make a motion to adopt the resolution number 8 19 20. I second the motion. Okay. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. So, and that, but part of that motion, Jane, would be to move ahead and advertise to start to fill the positions? Or do you need Yeah, that's, that's all. not require any separate okay. actions. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving so right just along. One second. So I heard a, a few people like Mark and Nick uh, and Virgil and whoever. Please try to be on that committee if you want to be on that. Your voice is heard on that. Okay. You'll be notified. Uh, yes. Um, so we're going to move on to a new business. The first item is uh, 11A. Right. Uh, that is uh, the Brown Act and District Committees. It's a council. Uh, Nichols will deliver this item. Um, sure. Uh, and I and I apologize that I don't have all the background of the discussion that happened related to this issue. All I really mm -hmm. have is a question that was referred to me in this memo attempts to answer the question. Um, the question that I got was whether. Um, Laddock can be um, exempted or uh, some kind of a uh, suspended. suspended, or whether the Brown Act can be suspended as it applies to the development of the annual report um, by the Long Pico um, Assessment District Oversight Committee. And unfortunately, I'm not aware of any um, exemption or uh, way in which the Brown Act doesn't cover Laddock as a standing committee of the district. Um, but I'm always open to, you know, ideas if somebody is, has a, a concept as to how legally an exception could be made, but I, I'm just not aware of that. Okay. Uh, any board comments here? No. no. You no. don't have any? See? No lawyer. So no. The, the LELAC chair is present tonight. And yes, and I know. She may want to uh, oh. address this issue as well. So, I, I will go I will over her. Okay, Tony, say. Okay, um, well, I, I would like to let, the reason why we brought this up is we all on the, the board and all of the, um, all of the LADOC members attended Brown Act training, and there was a gentleman um, that delivered it named um, Dennis Timoney, and he is the state's chief risk officer for Special District Risk Ma Management Authority and also an expert on the Brown Act. And at that meeting, he, um, he asked a few questions and then he informed us that the LADOC committee was not subject to the Brown Act and that we, um, and, but yet that the board could absolutely require us to, um, to adhere to the Brown Act um, rules. And we've been having such a difficult time meeting on the annual report and that um, we had very rarely would we have public members. So we thought, oh, how great it would be if we could just meet at our homes and get everything all worked out. And, and so, and at our last meeting, we did request, we, Rick mentioned that he was going to get in touch with Gina, but we did request that he get in touch with this gentleman 
um, Dennis Timoney to get his opinion on our request if we could suspend it just for the, um, those meetings um, in regards to the annual report. And so Rick gave me permission to reach out to him. And Mr. Timoney, in his, in his response and in Gina's response, um, he, he saw that we were considered a standing committee. And so he said that because, and we are a standing committee now, and, and so he said that absolutely we're required to meet the Brown Act. And at the time of our um, Brown Act training, we had just, um, this new board had just come. We weren't a standing committee. We didn't have regular meetings and um, regularly scheduled meetings that we have standing all the time. So um, I think that's where the confusion came in. So we, I did send Rick a, an email um, stating that, okay, here is the response from the gentleman. We absolutely see now that that is not possible and we, um, of course, we want to adhere to those regulations. So, I'm, um, it's unfortunate that this was left on the agenda. But um, we, I'm, I'm sure that all of my fellow committee members would agree with me that we will completely follow the rules, and we're getting close to finishing the annual report. Thank you. Of course, this item went out on the agenda before there was a response right. from Dennis. Mm -hmm. So. This is a good informational item. Just an informational item. It's not going to be acted on. Okay. All right. So um, item B. Um, yes, we have an exciting uh, item of discussion of the possible action related to the design of the 2019 pipeline project. Our district engineer is here to deliver this item. Sure. Yes, on August 1st, the San Jose Valley Water District advertised a request for a proposal for counseling consulting services for the design of the 2019 pipeline project. By 3 p.m. on August 30th, the district had received five proposals. The proposals were from the following firms, EKF Engineering, Waterworks Engineering, Provost and Pritchard, Consulting Group, NME Civil Engineers, Shaw and Wheeler Consulting Civil Engineers. At 2 p.m. on September 5th, the Engineering Committee met to review the proposals. The proposals were evaluated using the criteria set forth in the RFP. All of, all of the proposals were high quality and well presented. The major differences were the length of time required to complete the design work and the associated fee. After a lengthy discussion, the committee made the determination that the shop and wheeler proposal was the best and asked staff to interview the firm. The shop and wheeler proposal included both the lowest fee and substantial completion of the design within the time frame set forth in the RFP. On September 10th, district staff met with shop and wheeler to discuss the following components of the design. The firm's local experience with pipeline projects, cost estimating, utility mapping and potholes, Caltrans and county encroachment permits, geotechnical surveys and soil borings, envir environmental permits and clearances, and project schedule. <coughs> Staff originally planned to complete the environmental work associated with the Quail Hollow Pipeline internally. However, the recent resignation of the district's environmental manager prompted staff to pursue a different approach and staff is now recommending that this environmental work be completed by Shop and Wheeler's environmental subconsultant, Denise Duffy and Associates. Staff has requested a price from Shop and Wheeler for this work. And we now have a proposal. And the proposal from Denise Duffy and Associates uh, submitted through Shop and Wheeler is $30,822. After the interview, district staff felt that Shop and Wheeler had a good understanding of the project complexities and had a comprehensive plan for completion of the design of the 2019 pipeline project while meeting district standards and timelines. Therefore, staff concurs with the recommendation of the engineering committee 
that the Board of Directors award a design contract for the 2019 pipeline project to Shop and Wheeler Consulting Engineers. Thank you. Um, is the, the 30K in line with what you would have expected? Yeah. yeah. Consistent, if you take a look at, at um, that level of effort, um, yeah, it's in the ballpark. It's also in the ballpark of other projects that firm has done for us on environmental review. Mm -hmm. Yes, we reviewed them. They're in the process of designing the LMP programs. The other advantage of uh, having that firm do the environmental work is they'll work in concert with the design engineer and should speed up the process. If you bring in another firm that that engineering design firm is not familiar with, sometimes it can create time sure. extension. Sort of yeah. You know, we hear all the time things like we're cutting engineering and cutting engineering. I'm uh, not engineering, I mean environmental. I'm sorry. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars every year on environmental on our projects, we have to. And I don't think most people realize that. Uh, and it, it, it's ongoing. I mean, I think even one of the tanks in Lompico is like $100,000 for environmental because of what we got, June Beetle? The Mount Hermann Beetle. Oh, yeah. So there's a we spend a lot of money on this, and, and we have to do that. A part of our job is to make sure when we're doing uh, work on the district is that we don't harm the environment in the process. So I'm going to go. I'll come to the audience when all board members have a chance to talk. Then I'll, I'll come to the audience. Um, I guess a couple of points. First of all, I think it's it's safe to say that the total cost would be that of Shopping Wheeler and Denise Stuff in the association, which is going to be in the order of 370000 375000 just to make sure everybody understands the total price is. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we, Rick and I discussed it. I think what we would recommend is that um, you give us authorization to award, or you award to Shop and Wheeler at the 341,000 amount, and then we do a change order for the additional work for the environmental. That's the way you recommend doing it? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. And this is still lower than the next bid around. Oh, well, by, yeah. what, two to three times yeah. so, the other the other quotes, yeah. I might add. So not only is it equal in what we believe will be the outcome, we're spending a whole lot less money. The other thing I want to point out is that we really need to get this, or I would like to see this approved tonight because we are under the gun time-wise. Uh, we need to get the engineering done by March 1st so that we can get the full construction season in, this, in the extended summertime next year. So I'm hopeful that we can uh, we can get this done tonight. By moving early to the construction season, like Darren said, we'll get a better price from contractors exactly. to have the full construction season. I will be happy to make a motion when oh, we're done discussing well, this. Um, when we're done discussing this. Yeah. Well, I look forward to this work being done, uh, the pipelines, and if this is the first step, and uh, I'm trusting your guys' work on this, and um, so I'm taking a recommendation of the staff, and I suggest, I agree with Lou, we should move forward with this. Now I'm going to go out to the audience, and uh, you have a ca Kathleen? Uh, Cynthia. Cynthia, sorry. Uh, I just had a question. So, um, Jen Nicholson's position, would would she do any of that environmental work, or is, was her position outside yeah, she, of that? She would just coordinate that work, and there would still be consultant. Um, but uh, she would uh, coordinate the work, and instead of Jen coordinating the work right now, we'll have Shop and Wheeler coordinate the work. So, is there additional cost to the district not having Jen's position filled. There's also a salary survey a savings right now without having Jen. I, I'd say it's close to a wash. And we are moving ahead to replace Jen. Um, uh, it's it's just uh, we're hoping to get two to three months out on replacing that position. That position is well needed and we are moving ahead on replacing. 
and woo, a bunch of hands came up. Uh, Nick? Uh, my concern, again, is about the financing of this stuff. We've gone, we've sent the ratepayers into debt by 14 million already, and I just want to be sure that this 14 million is not being handed out a little bit uh, easily. Uh, this is a lot of money, and there's going to be a need for another loan after this one, uh, is what I've been told. And so I'm just wondering, why is it that like so much money goes to 300 and something thousand dollars just for just for studying it? I mean, no, this is for design. design. Designing it. Okay. Design plan okay. specifications to go yeah. out to okay. This is for okay. design. Okay. And uh, have they bid out for, for construction uh, companies for constructing it yet? I, I don't know anything about that. Most people don't. But uh, I just wonder, are we going to really get the best bang for our buck? Because we sure borrowed a lot of bucks. Well, thank you. Tom. Well, I mean, we need a design. Yeah. We can't put it out for construction well, without a no, design. No, I'm not saying that you don't. I'm just wondering, is that really the best price? That's a pretty hefty price, in my opinion. Now, you know, I haven't seen the competition, but that's it's, a lot of money. It's a lot cheaper than any of the other people. Okay. Darren will have a comment. Okay, yeah, so yeah. generally speaking, design design costs are somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. If you if you were to estimate the cost of construction of this project, just for round numbers, we said 10 million dollars. You would you know the cost of the design would be anywhere from one million to a million and a half. The cost of this design is 341 thousand dollars. That's an extremely good price for the amount of design work that's being done. And we had what, six bidders or five bidders? Yeah, five, five, five. Five. And we did have a million plus dollars bid come in for this project. Yeah. We took the low, lowest bid. And now we hope that we can be approval with the construction process too. Okay. Uh, so, Mark, back there. Yes, I'd like to address this to uh, Mr. Langfield. Where are specifically, uh, which lines are we talking about repairing? If we could use the map, could you point, get up and point? Specifically, I'd like to know how many millennium miles. Well, the green pins, and Daryl will get up and show you, are the actual projects yes. for that loan. Okay, so this is for several projects. Five, 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 five. Okay, and what's the total mileage? The total millennial miles per foot? Three point something miles. Okay, I get it. Okay, so yeah, put a whole pipeline from this pin to this pin. Okay, that's coming out of Zianti? Right, along Quail Hollow Road, along the Quail Hollow Ranch. Okay, that's up where I live. Right. Right. Yeah, the entire length right now, that's a six inch pipe. Okay, and that's how many miles? Roughly? Uh, and it's 3.3 .3 in total. Okay, okay, for the whole, all, all water all lines? All pipelines. For 3.3 .3 miles. For, for th how many, how many millions? 3.3 .3 miles. Yes, I know, but how many millions do all five pro projects cost? Estimates varied somewhere between 10 and 15 million. What's the cost per mile? I couldn't, I don't have that. You don't have a calculator. Well, we can do that if you want that. <laughs> I would. Four million a mile is just about on average. <clears throat> this is going to increase fire flow, increase the water flowing. I'm not doubting that. And I just want to know what the cost price, is uh, per mile. Right. Working in civil engineering firms for I'm many easy. years, I, I'm a little suspect that sometimes the uh, margin of if you, profit. If you use $12, Twelve million dollars three, divided by three point three is three point six. Three point six and change per mile. Okay. No. And do you have any man? Do you have any manpower estimates on that at all yet, or is that too premature? Construction manpower? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't even done the design yet. Okay. This is just design. This is just a, yeah. So you basically have a conceptual length of pipe from here to there, etc. And so then you go in and do the details and design. I understand. Very specific. I've worked in many civil engineering firms okay. before. So uh, it seems very, very expensive to me, but if that's what the going rate is. The, the design that we're considering today or the overall cost? No, no, the design. 300 and some yeah, thousand Yeah, it seems, it seems so, rather, uh, so do you but want, it's all right. It's If that's what your, your current bids are and that's what the reality of the market is. Uh, I just uh, want to figure out what the, what the uh, yeah. Percentages. If you take 12 million and you divide it by 341,000. So each of those green uh, tabs represents a end and beginning. 
of a pipeline. Is that correct? Some are just the shorter ones are just a a point, and then longer ones have a, a start and a stop. Okay. So that's two point eight. That's two point eight percent. That's you know okay. if you're here twelve million. Okay. But most designs. I mean designs are. I mean it's hard to get a design done for less than ten percent. So. Because they're local firms, they have you know, okay. clear, good understanding of the. Okay. The just, I, I just kind of want to get a feel for the. Which is good nice. Place. You know, the answer kind of like some of Nick's questions. That come spring of next year, we are going to be digging up just about from one end of this valley to another on pipeline replacement, storage tank replacement, so on Pico. Right. Hopefully, a storage tank replacement of Scenic Drive. Probation tank is in construction. We, you're going to see infrastructure replacement like you've never seen. It. Well, it's important for fire protection. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. Okay. Thank and that's you. That's where that 15 million is going into these projects. Yeah. So you're going to have also lateral lines going to fire hydrants in that. Definitely. Definitely. In that project. Definitely. And these are large distribution mains to move water from one end of the valley to the other to improve efficiencies, to improve conjunctive use, to use more surface water, less well water. Um, there is. A host of benefits, and majority of these projects, especially the big ones, are here and here, are going to affect 100 percent of our customer base, gotcha. which is even a bigger bang for our buck. Okay, these are great projects. The answer my question. Virgil, you had your hand up, or did you remove it? I just, I was just impressed. Okay. It was, it was really well done. There were multiple bids. This is so remarkably different than all this stuff. To even just two years ago, and and at some point we have to put away our pencils and say we trust the people that we hired to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Virgil. Here, here. Virgil, just to touch on that, by having an district engineer in house, we're a, bingo. We, we can go out, beat the bush for bidders. Darren spent a lot of time with going out and calling firms. Hey, are you going to bid this project? Look at this project. We have multiple bidders. He combined all the pipelines, so we're probably going to get a, a considerable amount of bidders to do the projects when we when we go out to bid. He's he's brought his professionalism in, and it showed. Right off, right off. You don't have yeah. to sell it. Uh, you only get to talk once yeah. on an item. Sorry. Uh, I I need to make that clear to everybody. You get to speak once on each item. Otherwise, we're never leaving here. Um, so. So anyway, um, anybody else that hasn't talked about this? And what Virgil was saying previously, people were just given the, the job and no RFP. Yes, we're doing things differently and doing them right. I hope you realize that. Um, so, as, as the chairman of the engineering committee and not as a board member, Please. You are always a board member. You cannot take yourself away from being a board member. You can be a joint, whatever you want to be, but okay. you're a board member. Sorry. I feel compelled to say that if we didn't have Darren and, and all of Rick's staff, but in particular Darren, we would be giving this project to WSC. It would be 1 to 1.5 million in design. And we would miss the window for construction starting next year. You know, it, this, I am really happy with, with what's going on here. We're, I mean, and, and if you want to know why we're spending 300000 instead of $1.5 million, he's sitting right across from him. You know, we, we got to trust him and, and we got to move forward because this is aggressive. You know, it's going to require a lot of late nights from that guy over there. And, you know, I want to support him in every way that I can. So... So does that mean we aren't paying him 1.5? That's what we should. Uh, yeah, we need, uh, let's see, we need an emotion. A motion. I have a legal point here related to the motion. Okay. It should specify, is the idea that uh, this will authorize staff to execute a contract with this? Okay, the motion should specify that the board is authorizing staff to enter into a contract. The district manager assigned? Yes. Okay. So. I would like to make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the engineering manager by memo dated September 19, 2019. 
to enter into a contract with Shop and Wheeler for the design work and with Denise Duffy for environmental permitting work and for a price not to exceed three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Right. And authorize the, the district. And authorize the, the district staff to proceed. Or, or the district manager to sign this contract. Yes. A second. Okay. We got a motion and a second. So, Director Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Moving right along here, folks. Item C, long service line agreement. That, uh, the, you know, let the engineering manager present this as he's on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> Early, earlier this year, Mr. Ken Carvalho applied for a water service to APN 90-111-27, generally located on River Street in Boulder Creek. Staff's review indicate that indicates that the district has no water distribution facilities at this location and recommends that a long no, that water service be provided by a long service line agreement. Several other homes on River Street have are served by long service line agreements. The water meter would be generally located 100 feet west of the parcel on River Street. That's also the location of, of all the other meters for the long service line agreements. In the past, the district has authorized long service line agreements where future water, water main line extensions are not likely to be constructed. The applicant is required to provide the district with proof of right of way. The applicant is required to participate in any future water main line extensions should such a main line provide service to the subject parcel. His recommendation that the Board of Directors approve the attached resolution which authorizes a long service line agreement for APN 90-111-27. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Point four. This is pretty standard, it was my understanding. We have several of these out in, in the distribution system where our customers enter into long service line. We require proof of right away um, and uh, we move forward. And if we are, the district is to extend in the future down that road, the new main line, the, the agreement requires the, the property owner to contribute to that project along the front footage of their parcel. Mm -hmm. These in the past have been on the consent agenda, but seeing we have from a relatively new board, I think this is the first time you have one of these agreements in front of you that we would put it on the regular panel. So, any comments? Well, I would like to ask a question. So what is the difference between a long service line versus something that's not a long service line? The customer does not have front footage along our main line. Okay. Um, so he'll be required to contribute if we go down that street to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will do it either way. We'll, some some customers will will pay to extend the main, or most of them will enter into a long service line. Any other board questions? Are there any uh, homes on this property now, yeah. or, uh, or are they being serviced by a well? Or no, there were no the there were there were no homes on that property at right. this point. He's building a brand new home that's yeah. almost complete. And uh, it, for some reason, he got in here late and got a building permit in the county without proof of water service. And he's close to completion of his home. So he must be able to turn. He must water it, yes. <laughs> there's, a, there's a six homes? Yeah, there's, there's a service line agreements? Okay. Yeah, there's several long service line agreements on <coughs> both sides of the street. Boy, the county really screwed up, didn't yeah. it? You know, there's a disconnect sometimes between the county and the district of the different entities, and notification sometimes gets lost. Yeah. Okay. So do we pay for the line? We do not. He we pays for it. Yeah. And we get a connection fee. And what is that connection fee? Uh, roughly ten thousand dollars. Roughly. Okay. No, actually, no. This would be a one inch, so it'd be closer to. Oh, okay, closer to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 Uh, and he'll pay uh, to extend the main line down. 
or it's in service line that is under our under our specifications. Any comments from the public? Okay. So we have a resolution here. Number seven. I think we did eight already. Didn't we do things out of order? That's not how they came to me, so I assign the numbers as they come to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not criticizing. I'm just wondering what you've done in this county. Set the resolution, whatever number it is. Seven. Number seven. Nineteen. Okay. Any other discussion? And I'll second that motion then. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. And Director Swan? Yes. Yes. So, we had an addition to the agenda, um, and that was the letter to the governor. You want to talk I'll, about? I'll, I'll refer to uh, Council Nichols. Okay. Okay. On this um, one again. And there should be copies of the draft letter, uh, essentially final, ready to sign draft letter, in front of each of the board members. I believe there were some on the wrong side, the members of the public as well. Um, the issue here is that Senate Bill 13, overall its goal is to make um, accessory dwelling units uh, more easily buildable. It, it seeks to relax some of the development restrictions that may otherwise prevent the units from being built. And I believe that the policy objectives behind this type of law, some of which have been done locally and some statewide, is to um, increase the housing stock to deal with essentially the housing crisis in California, at least in part. Um, but the reason why CSDA became concerned and made this an issue, uh, brought the issue to um, the attention of its members, is that part of the law in order to make these ADUs easier to build, they restricted the ability of um, local government agencies, primarily counties and cities, to charge development impact fees to lessen, uh, you know, to offset some of the consequences of this additional development. And specific to the district, they've restricted the ability to require these ADUs to have separate meters and the ability to charge connection and capacity fees that reflect the additional burdens that may be put on the district's um, water system. So. Um, essentially, it puts these ADUs <coughs> into a separate rate class, if you will. It means that the district can't apply its typical you know, policies and procedures related to how it you know, requires new um, meter service to be established or how it calculates connection or uh, capacity fees or additional fees and instead puts these limits on the ability of the district to charge the fees that it uses to recover um, its costs for maintaining and improving its infrastructure and serving customers. So that's the concern. And um, so for that reason, uh, Stephanie prepared a letter following CSDA's template to submit to the governor to request a veto of the legislation. And um, we tweaked it a little bit because the template focused on impact fees, which the district doesn't charge. And so we tweaked it a bit to focus on um, connection and capacity fees, which the district does charge also part of the law. And if um, this draft is uh, complete, it was prepared today by Stephanie, I took a look at it, and um, Holly prepared it so it's ready for board president's signature if you um, if you approve going forward with, with this submission. I just might add, we are seeing an increase in accessory dwelling units in the county. The county is promoting um, this type of building. And uh, we are collecting connection fees. And we don't see much growth in the San Lorenzo Valley Water District of new construction. We are seeing an increase in the ADA and the accessory dwelling units, the granite units. Um, so uh, this will have an impact on the district if it goes through on connection fees and, and charges. What would 
the fees be like the last parcel we just talked about was twenty thousand dollars. Are we talking something similar for these ABUs? Yes. Ten thousand. So guys, well, if you, you guys have to say if you want to put a four hundred square foot ABU in this backyard. You, you if you do that in your house right now, we would charge you ten thousand dollars for the additional for that a connection fee. Period. Because you have another unit on the property. We look at that as another house, regardless of the square footage. If it had the criteria of the cooking facility, bathroom, uh, it was habitable. Uh, we would charge you another connection fee for that. That's what our rate structure is. How much would that be? That'd be ten another ten thousand dollars. It's an upgrade. Yeah. yeah. We have to upgrade upgraded. your meter from five eighths to a one inch. And that's how we make our, our, our connection fee and our, our monthly fees would increase with that as well. It's an increase to the district water system, not only in domestic fees, but fire flow, that we would have to come back in and install. As we upgrade our system, we're installing fire hydrants and bigger pipes for fire flow. If I might add. Go yes. So please. the connection fee for a one inch is about $20,000. Yeah. So if you have a 5 8 meter and you're upgraded to a 1 inch meter, you pay the difference from the 5 8 connection fee. 5 8 connection fee is about $10,000. Yeah. So you pay $10,000 more to upgrade to a 1 inch. Mm -hmm. So then you're actually paying your full $20,000 for the actual 1 inch connection fee. They never paid that before. Yeah. They only paid the 10 because they only had a 5 8. And then you have so a monthly charge for a 1 inch versus so 5 8. James, um, let's say. You don't want to build a granny unit, but you want to go from a 5 eighths to a 1 inch. You would again pay that extra money. That's right? correct. Right. Okay. Right. Based on fixture count under you know, the uniform phone code. It doesn't address fire flow. It's just your basic fixture count in the house. Some houses are come right in in a 1 inch meter. You know, larger 5,000, 3,000 square foot homes have a lot of bathrooms, a lot of laundry rooms, and those type of things. It adds up quick. So if there's a house with that one inch meter already and they're doing an ADU, then they have to go to an inch and a half meter or something, then they got to pay like the $20,000 to get to an inch and a half. You can get an inch and a half? If there's enough fixture count, unit counts, yes. Oh, okay. And so what is this bill specifically telling if the governor signs it? What will this bill do? Say, would we be obligated to put in a one inch meter and not charge them $10,000? No, it, it comes... It, it applies when you have a, an existing residential property that's adding an ADU, um, and you can't consider the addition of the ADU to be a new residential use to the extent that triggers the calculation of the fees, and also for ADUs that meet certain requirements. Um, I think it's if it's within the existing construction or if it doesn't exceed it by like 150 square feet, you cannot require them to have a separate um, Connection, and I believe you can't charge them fees under that circumstance. Right, and if it's larger than that, you can charge the fees, but it it gives you the basis on which you have to charge the fees, which may be different from the way the district presently assesses. Um, I do believe that square footage works under yeah. the county, so most of them are under that square footage mm -hmm. with the county permit process. So it would have an impact on district fees. So we don't get any money from any of these that are being built. I mean, if they were assignments, we wouldn't really get anything in. The county's promoting, uh, the city of Santa Cruz also is promoting yeah. ADUs, right? For, for the housing crisis, like yeah. being close on. And so what, what sort of fees are they charging or waiving? Do we have any idea? For a, an existing homeowner that wants to build an ADU, what sort of liability or, or fee structure are they faced with today? That's different. Than I, I'm talking a little bit outside my, my area of expertise here, but I, I believe most of what these laws do is relax some of the zoning requirements mm -hmm. related to the ADUs, which simply makes it such that typically you wouldn't have been able to do this at all. Yeah. And now under the zoning laws, you can do it. Um, but this is going even further. And, and essentially, I mean, in my view, essentially what this does is it says to the extent there are costs related to there may be a lot of good reasons to promote ADUs as a way to house people, but this legislation is saying that to the extent you do that, you add additional residences through the ADU process, and it's imposing costs on utilities like the district to service that additional residential use. The district has to ignore that and can't charge for those additional impacts. So, I mean, that's a way to incentivize this kind of development, but it's on the backs of... And it'll put a great strain on our water system. Yeah. 
So, go ahead. Okay, all right. Um, so, two things is, one, I think some of the reading I've done about ADUs or granny units is that they're permitted if they're uh, actually a family member, all right? So they're, some of them are trying to be designed. Right. That's not the county, though. Okay. I think if you, you can go down and apply for a permit for an ADU. Period. And they've relaxed the zoning for smaller lots that you can have a second dwelling unit on. How they're dealing with septic is another question. Okay. How many ADU permits have we had in the water district? I couldn't give you that right now. I know three in the last year. Okay. Oh, it's more than that. Oh, yeah. And more than that. Than that. I, I deal primarily with these meter reviews. Mm -hmm. Right. And we've probably got. Ten in the last couple of but months. But not built or not. No, no, just, no. They're, they're coming through. They're coming through. They're trying yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. But there's three of them, three or four that can actually be upgraded and they built. Okay. And the connection fee for the five eighths, which is a ten thousand, and then the one inch, which is twenty thousand. How much of that is profit, and how much of that is our cost? Well, it's a connection fee. Well, they, can you? They have We're not making any money off of these connection fees. They well, pay the for the service upgrade as well. The but as far as the connection fee, I mean, we have a cost. Yeah, the connection fee is to pay is to be put into the infrastructure of the district and for past infrastructure of the district, such as the replacing of the probation tank and those type of things. So it's not really profit. Yeah, I mean, this is. That's I, I don't give you the I, I can't. Yeah. I can't because I work on Prop 218 issues. I, I sort of can't help diving into this one. Um, this, this is frustrating, frankly, to somebody who works with Prop 218 because Prop 218 and the Fee Mitigation Act put really strict limitations on the district such that when you calculate the basis for a capacity or connection charge, you have to figure out what the reasonable cost of providing essentially that governmental services to your customers in order to calculate the cost. You actually can't put profit of any kind in there. It has to reflect just the district's costs. And there are estimates and things, but it's reflective of the actual true cost of the district. And so if you say, if you then set a lower bar and say you can't collect the full cost of doing this for these particular types of uses, I mean, what's the district supposed to do? You're not Make allowed to connect. Yeah, you're not allowed to and connect. And the connection fee is not to be spent on O&M, it's to go back into capital improvement projects. That's the point I was trying to make was that we're not, right. you know, that, that money is real money. It is costing us right. that $10,000 or $20,000 to make that connection. And that goes into infrastructure. Right. And then what James said, there's an installation fee that they pay time and material to actually yeah. install. Yeah. It's a little bit different. Um, Brian? Um, I have any comments from... Okay, Cynthia, I, I got it right. Though. Yes. Any new builders out there? Pardon? <laughs> uh, I have a question. So when someone builds an ADU, are they required to meter that ADU separately from the main house? No, they can have a choice. So it's not that you're providing a new meter connection. We can. We have. It just depends what the customer wants. Okay, and is that... An additional cost in addition to the ten thousand. There would be a, it would be a, another monthly cost. I think that having two meters on the same parcel would cost more than one meter. Okay, and monthly. So if a house, say you have a seven hundred and fifty square foot house, and you add an ADU that's seven hundred and fifty square feet, do you need to upgrade your connection? Yes, I think under our ordinance, yes, you'd have to. It depends on the fixture count, but we would most likely, yes, update to upgrade that connection to a one inch. Even if you had only one? It's the fixture. We'd have to do fixture count. Yeah. And not the square footage. It's the number of fixtures so in the house. So you have one toilet and one shower. Yeah, it just depends on what they have and what they have on the property. And then it's a calculation. Are you counting fixtures or what do you count as fixtures? That's what I'm trying to And Anything you get water, a dishwasher, so, shower. Oh, okay. Retreat. What I'm saying. Anything, and they all have a number assigned through the Uniform Plumbing Code, and Darren will take those and, and do a calculation, and then we'll, we go across and see what size we do that for. But theoretically, you could uh, get by with a 5 8 connection if you had a low enough number of fixtures. Does that ever happen? Well, it's my understanding that the way that our codes are drafted, that mm -hmm. even if the fixture count is low enough, 
that if you have two dwelling units on the property, that right. it necessitates a certain size meter. Yeah, it goes under right. a multiple user ordinance. Okay. So that's a given. If you have two different structures that are habitable, that's a one inch every set, basically. Some people opt to have two meters because they want to rent it out and don't want to have to do with any of the Mm -hmm. of the, uh, the building and all that, and they want the rent the tenant to get the uh, net, and other people have it on one meter. Mm -hmm. So you're, the landlord is required to put in a one inch connection, and what they're doing is asking the district to swallow the cost so that the landlord <coughs> can make more money by renting out the ADU. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't quite understand. <coughs> they're transferring. <coughs> transferring the cost from the landlord to the district, which seems unfair. Mark? Hi, I've read this and I understand the uh, intent. Um, unfortunately, I would not support this uh, letter from the district because it, it's really provincial in itself. <coughs> and it, I don't think it's really necessary when you really don't have the population demand, even the ADU demand, compared to the rest of the urban in county areas where they're trying to establish additional ADUs for uh, housing costs at a lower call entry fee. We need to provide additional housing throughout the county and throughout the state, actually. We just passed a bill for $4.3 billion to build new affordable housing. So I, I think we're living in an island here <coughs> trying to, to from, uh, it's like the mouse that roared. We're uh, flipping off the state, so to speak, and telling uh, you know the, the state that we uh, our little uh, 7,900 uh, water connection community here is uh, it doesn't uh, does not agree with the state policy. The state is going the opposite way. They're trying to reduce the barriers by reducing zoning requirements and passing on uh, <coughs> allowing uh, the use of of water connections at a much lower cost. And I think. Uh, as the council indicated, the Fee Mitigation Act and Proposition 218 do address the issue of establishing fees based on the cost of infrastructure. So that could be made up in either fees or special connection fees, but I, I think to, to uh, target ADUs is kind of meaningless when the, there is a large shortage of affordable housing in the, throughout the county. So this is a state policy. And I, I don't think we're, we should be in the business of uh, trying to lobby for that. So my, my recommendation is I would uh, cancel this letter from the state. Any other comments, Virgil? Uh, yes. Um, I've heard speculation, but I've not seen any accurate data on exactly what this would cost the district nor have I been given the opportunity to, to view SB 13. So you're going to make a decision based upon speculation, okay? And you are charged with representing not only the, the, the good operations of the district, but the affordable operations of the district, and you represent the ratepayers. So this is really kind of an anti-ratepayer stance with if you don't have data to support your position. Thank you. Uh, Tony? Well, the, the, you brought up a great point that um, we, I mean, we know, all know that that's a huge problem, um, housing, at, especially here in Santa Cruz County. So, um, you know, maybe there should be more thought put into it. On some kind of a committee to study that. So, yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have any time. Uh, so, uh, yes, sir. Oh, oh. My name is uh, Tom Fredericks, and I wanted to ask Gina a question. Am I able to do that? Yes, go ahead. There, you made a reference to an association that I, I didn't know what the acronym stood for, but what I've heard in that reference is that the board is being asked to join other oh, districts in, um, in objecting to the governor's signature on this bill. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct. There was yeah. a call out to uh, what, is the, what, the, what is the acronym 
So in other words, um, I, I understand how it's important to give um, homeowners more incentive to build an ADU. On the one hand, but tonight gave me a really good education about that doesn't come costless, it's not free, and that um, this district is being invited by other districts in the state to join together to at least make public aware that these discounts to ADUs that are in this bill are not free, that they're someone else pays for them, and in effect, the rate pays for them. So I just, I don't know what the answer to that is, but, um, but I do like the idea of joining with others in order to feed the case so that at least other people get the education that I got tonight. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, Gina. So, special districts, there are all kinds of special districts. Um, there are cemetery districts, there's fire districts, there's just numerous types of districts. And is this really only affecting water districts? No, actually water districts are almost secondary here, um, which is why we had to tweak the language for our purposes. Um, the impact fees, the development impact fees are kind of the bigger ticket item here, and that affects primarily cities and counties and other types of large, um, well, large to small government entities of various types statewide, but especially cities and counties. Um, the connection and capacity fees are specific to sewer and water districts, some like ours and others differently, but a large number of entities. I support what this gentleman says. It seems like people who have the money to build an ADU, and I personally have built an ADU, have have the I, I approve of incentivizing it, but then all the people who can't uh, afford that kind of building are really subsidizing uh, those those fees. And that just doesn't seem fair. So I would support signing this letter. All righty. Any, uh, anyone who hasn't has their say here? No. All right. So? I'll, I have something to say. Um, so I support finding solutions to the housing prices. I see it in my neighborhood, uh, whether they're legal or illegal, ADU units and people are uh, moving into garages and all, all sorts of stuff to uh, deal with a real problem. And um, I'm not uh, blind to that. Um, but for a water district that's trying to count every penny, and that's what we've been doing here since this new board has been on board, is to count every penny. For us to subsidize um, the cost of this meter in installation, and that's just the start of it. I think Rick mentioned there's the whole thing about uh, sewer, or not sewers, but the septic systems. There's, there's a lot of other issues that are involved in this. Um, but for a water district, I'll just say it again for clarity, is we're counting every penny. We can't give away pennies in this regard. Anybody else? Does anybody want to make any kind of a motion here? Not do the letter, do the letter, whatever. I'll make a motion that we, that we authorize you to sign this letter and send it to the government. Is that what we're being asked to do, right? I don't know whether you authorize Lois to sign it and send it? Yes. That's why that, motion. That motion will. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. 
Director Swan. Yes. I guess I'm signing a letter and my name's going to go on the one list in the post office. Yeah. The governor's going to send you a personal response, too. All right. Uh, okay. Um, so we have the consent agenda, and this is where you get your chance to, if you want to pull minutes. Yes, I do. For okay. August 28th. August 28th. Okay. And so what is your... Uh, so there's a, a summary of when the applicants for this position came up and um, we gave uh, some brief discussion about what our issues were and things like that. Um, and it captured, most of that summary captured ex exactly what I was pointing out and trying to make a point of. But there was one sentence that I just wanted to clarify. Um, and it's on page 16 of the board packet. But it says um, that I supported the, that. Uh, in any case, um, I'd like prior to that sentence say, follow grand jury recommendations and put the grand jury report behind us. Right now it says, put the grand jury report behind us. I'd like to include the statement that I said at the time, follow the grand jury recommendations. So that's my... Okay. And that was... That's that, it. That's it. it. Right. That's it. Okay. President Henry, since it was pulled, it would be appropriate to have public discussion if there is any. Oh, okay. Um, let me go to the public. Does anybody remember what was said? Sure I, I, know, I know you do, but you're not the public. Uh, I, I'll give you a chance. Okay. Um, anybody else? Okay. All right. I'll, well, I just wanted to point out that these are not verbatim uh, minutes. They are also recorded right there next to it. There's an icon that says, you can listen to the exactly yeah. what was said. So to go back and change it, I, if that's how I, what I'm directed to do, I would happily do that. But I would just say that they are not supposed to be verbatim minutes. Right. Well, I mean, the minutes would be so long, we'd have to sit here for three hours to read them. Um, but as far as listening to the recording, I can't. I don't know why, but I push that little thing and I don't hear anything. Maybe we should, you should talk to Scott and find out why it's not working. Oh, yeah. he'll probably <coughs> just screw up my computer and I'll never. <laughs> it's really pretty cool. You have to download them and then play ad. There's a little trick to how to do it, but yeah. you can do it. Well, if you say so. Um, all right. But um, so we, we you want a correction to the minutes? Yes. Right. Okay. Correction to the minutes. Mm -hmm. To what he said. Okay. That's the motion. I don't think That's we don't need a motion. Really a motion right? Well, since it's it got pulled from the consent agenda, typically the approval would be by motion. Oh, 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 to approve the minutes, the minutes with, the with the correction, right. right, but not the individual item, no. just the minutes. So, any other problems with the minutes here? None. So, we need a motion to um, approve the minutes. Let's we just approve them all. Approve the minutes and mm -hmm. the correction that Rick has yeah. suggested. For the 28th, yeah. August 28th. But we can just approve all the minutes while we're doing that, right? Sure, as long as um, there's no public comment, nobody wants to pull the other minutes for September, September 5th. 5th. You good with that? Uh, well, what you have for I, no, I just wanted that I that we're talking about only your board meeting minutes. Yeah, yeah right. right. This is all it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So you got a, you want to do a motion? Yeah, I thought I did. So I'll need yeah. a second, please. 
I'll second. Okay. And uh, Director Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Okay. We're moving on here to um, reports. And we have department status reports. And it looks like engineering is up first. Members of the board, um, most of these items are items that uh, are just recurring. Construction of the probation tank, one people PRV project, uh, right. a couple of projects in design, etc. Rather than basically going through the whole report, are there any specific questions that I can answer for you? Mm -hmm. No. No here. No. Okay. You pass. All right. Uh, finance uh, is not here. Are but you going to speak? A, I do have a, a brief report that the, uh, the bill list uh, is required to be presented to the board of directors. It will list out all the amount of bills paid and activities and check with the check register. Right. Uh, in the past, the district would have the current accounts payable items that are about to be paid in addition to the check register for all items paid. Right. The accounts payable invoices end up being on here twice. Uh, as uh, open payable and then as a paid item. These reports can become long and overwhelming in an attempt to simplify staff representing only the paid registers. Uh, this took the original bill list from 22 pages down to 10 pages. The decision was made after hearing multiple board members and citizens concerned over how long some of the, these reports were. And also, it didn't get updated in my agenda, but I do believe that the finance, the director of finances report also includes the uh, Lompico Assessment District financial statements. Okay. Uh, I didn't get It's, I didn't it's not in the LIDOC? No, I do believe it's in the, uh, oh, the okay. finance report. Okay. And that was sent to you and when the uh, agenda was updated, uh, an amended agenda. Right. I only looked under LIDOC, I didn't look under finance, I guess. So. so the check register is considerably smaller and probably easier to follow. Well, I do know in the past that people were confused and thinking no. that things were getting paid twice. Or and that's what it look, could look like to, by scanning yeah. through it. Yeah. You had to read carefully what it was saying. So I think that's a great change myself. I, I guess I don't see it under finance. It's not in your in your packet, Lois. It went out electronically. You already had your packet when that was added. Yeah, it was the second. It came out. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But it. But I did see it. I thought I saw it. You saw it online. Yeah. I've got a response back. I, I saw it. From me. Yes. yes. Okay. I did see it. Um, so it was under finance, not under. 13-2. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stephanie bought a plant for the farmer's market. We raffled the plant off at the farmer's market. That's what we did. Okay. Yes. When was that? Uh, that was the 30th of uh, August. Oh, right. And she and Bob, I do believe, were, uh, Director Fultz and her were there for that, uh, that session of the farmer's market, which is, has been a great outreach to people. We get a continual stream of people coming to our booth and talking to us about yeah. Yeah. You name it. <laughs> we, we had a great time at the farmer's market. So. Okay. Um, did did you have something you wanted to say, Tony, about the financial report or not? Well, um, I just wanted to see if it was in this the, this public version. That the whole point was so that the public would have access to the to the finance report. Mm -hmm. Can I show you? I have my okay. Well, if anybody looks at the 
Oh, online. Yeah, see that'll be great. Some more it's people there. will be able to see I it. I mean, I did see it, but I yeah. couldn't remember where I saw it. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Thank you so much. It's good stuff. <laughs> okay. So, did you want to say anything to I'm No, I'm going to say something with the next part. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> um, so, moving on to legal. I don't have anything to report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, no questions. Um, James, operations. Anything you want to say? Questions I'm here to answer. Uh, 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 point, 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 uh, we're with the board, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Did we move on beyond the legal discussion? Yes, we're in operations. Yeah, we moved. Okay. okay. We didn't, uh, there, was no, so, there was no comment from the public on the legal. I guess right. you had nothing to say. Um, I have a quick question. Okay. Uh, uh, on the letter from uh, the, the memorandum from uh, Gina from Nosman, it indicates uh, there's really no numbers in here in terms for of what? for fees charged in this. Is there is there a reason why that those numbers are missing? Legal you fees? mean this letter? Yes. We no, already no, no, talked no, no, no. about it. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. This this letter. Legal report. Huh? The legal, the legal report. report. It's a, a, a the legal report. From Osman, LLP. Okay. They're in the bill list. Yeah, they're on the bill what? list. What's the status? They're in the bill list. They're in the bill list. Yes, but. Yeah, she on the legal report she doesn't normally list associated fees. Right. Associated fees would be in the bill list for each month. Yeah, the fees are there every month. For an awesome Okay. They're there. So it won't be in a separate report then? No. No. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I got a question for you, James. I saw yesterday the guy doing the GPS or whatever it is. I got to look at that. What, what, what's going on now? Uh, we're getting ready to purchase a GPS unit for the district to GPS all of our valve cans, hydrants, meters, main lines to be able to put that on our GIS maps as a more accurate solution to our mapping. Okay. That's part of our master plan. Yes. Okay. I just, I, I saw it yesterday and I, I got to look at it. You know. So today, yeah. It was today. Yeah, it was today. Yeah. I have a question too. Hey, I, oh, was it today? You asked when that came out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long? Time. Time. <laughs> it was at noon <laughs> today. Yes, it was. <laughs> Jeez, you know what? You need to get a new board president. I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> Yes, just, just a quick question. I was, when I was looking through the, the, the bills, you know, Comcast comes up so often. Because I know you got a link with them for every one of your sites and stuff. Has anybody ever contacted Etheric Network? They're, they're, they're advertised all the time uh, for remote places up here, and they guarantee really great internet service, faster uptime uh, uploads and downloads. And they reach all remote parts of the valley. For people that aren't normally serviced by, say, Comcast or AT&T, or they don't have those services, mm -hmm. I'm just curious. No, we have Somebody haven't. might want to give them a call and say, hey, we've got all these sites. We can bundle them together. Can you give us a deal? Sure. Well, we'll definitely look into that. So, we have not done that. But we have worked with Comcast with what the more secure sites. We have worked with them and negotiated mm -hmm. prices with them yeah. to get better prices through them. We were at 200 some dollars for some sites, and we brought them all down pretty much $173 down. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's still a couple 280s in there. Well, yeah, depending on what we yeah, do. Yeah, depending on what site oh, it is. Oh, with the TV, I forgot. We don't have TV. You got the gate. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the If you have it, have any TV. The ones that you see at 250 are the ones that have internet, plus they have phone. Yeah. yeah. So it's like our treatment plants and stuff like that. They all have, they all have the higher. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if the third offers a phone. But anyway, it's just, just an idea. For sure. Get it okay. okay. All right. I guess it's been a very long day that I didn't remember what happened at noon today. I thought it was yesterday. Okay.
Blake. Blake. I have a comment on the operations report for August. Yeah. James, I'm looking at the overtime report. Sure. And I'm noticing that from 2017, for the annual number, there was about eight, well, there was eight, about, about 1,800 hours of overtime. 2018, about 1,500 hours of overtime. This year, if you annualize the eight months to a full year, it's going to come in somewhere around 1,200. At least I project that. 1,200 hours. You have reduced overtime significantly by about 35% over the last two years. That's, that's a consistent trend. Nice job. I commend you because I know how hard it is once you get into a chronic overtime situation to try to back off on that. Had a lot to do with Mr. Rogers. Well, I'm sure it has a lot to do with your people too, but <laughs> yes. you, know, I, you reported it. I'm going to give you the. Thank you, sir. Communications has helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Improvement and, and, and communications has helped us a lot. Going to internet at our sites, yeah. communications, that was a lot of overtime for us when communications were going down all the time. And scheduling has reduced overtime as well yeah. to, to get the stuff. You know, we do not schedule a workday overtime. Uh, our overtime is strictly emergency or done for a specific reason. Like we'll work at night in a business community and we turn the water off because they don't want to put the hairdresser and restaurants out of water during the day, so they'll work during you know, double time during the, the evening hours. But other than that, our overtime is strictly emergency response, and they've done considerable amount to lower that over the years. And well, I know a lot. Of 2017 was a major storm year where we had major emergencies after another major emergency with road washouts and stuff. So we had a lot of overtime dedicated to repairs and nighttime work on these jobs where they would only let us do night work. So we had to have an inspector out there from the district. And so that incurred a lot, lot, lot. that's why 2017 is so inflated. Take the accommodation <laughs> because I'm sure it was well earned. And just, just to put it in context, we're talking about five figures in dollars that you've saved the district. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All thank right. You. Um, committee reports, future committee agenda items. Uh, well, the chair of the admin and the finance committee is not here. So not I am just vice chair. Nothing from us. Anything from engineering or environmental? Well, I think we already covered the, the, the salient points, um, at least for engineering. Right, Darren? I don't know that we have anything else to really add there. Uh, environmental, we're, we're still proceeding with uh, fire prevention planning uh, and uh, talking about future projects as well. Rick, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, it's just the engineering committee is quite quite busy. And like I said, come spring next year, we are going to be digging up one end of the center of the valley to the other, and it's going to be it's going to be a great time. I like the way you put it. We're creating a new backbone yes. from Boulder Creek and to the majority of that money that we're spending in projects are affecting 100% of our customers. Which right. is really good too. And we believe, I mean, if I can speak. We, the board and the district, believe that a lot of our problems are going to be solved by this uniform backbone. Correct? Yes. I mean, we're going to, the, the pressure issues we yes. have with boosting pressure and reducing pressure and really all the to. redundant things that we do simply because we have these four inch, six inch, eight inch, 12 inch pipes that just exactly. keep stepping up and stepping down just goes away. Well, once we get that fire flow in. into the Ziani, Lampico Canyons, so we'll be able to move water. Scotts Valley to Boulder Creek, Boulder Creek to Scotts Valley. Um, reduce a lot of our low pressure complaints and the ability to utilize surface water while we have it without impacting fisheries or, or any other environmental concerns that will be able to move water. Um, and if we get new customers, we'll be able to handle that. And we'll try to pick up customers along the way from existing homes. There are a few homes out there that uh, have other water sources that we may be able to pick up along the way. Be a goal. One other thing I'd like to point out is that you know, I'm really pleased with the way that the 
engineering committee is, is working. It's very efficient. We take these projects to the engineering committee. We review the proposals. It's happened twice now, one with the master plan, one with this pipeline project. We get input from the committee. The committee directs us to conduct the interviews. And um, as long as you know our interviews uh, basically prove out that they that that firm is the best firm, we don't have to take it back. We can just bring it right to the board and just continue on with the, with the process. I think it's moving, and it's 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 working very efficiently. I'm pleased with it. One last thing on the engineering committee: we are moving ahead uh, through the engineering committee on a, a meeting with the residents of Fair Creek Estates Wastewater on the RFPs that came in. Uh, we'll review the RFPs. We had three proposals, which last time we only got one, this time we got three proposals. And we have a scheduled date, Ms. Holly? October 2nd. October 2nd to meet out uh, at Bear Creek Estates Country Club um, to go over the proposals and we're working with those folks moving that along. And we do have a recommendation. And we do have a recommendation. We, we I mean, think all we three firms are good, but uh, uh, we're going to involve the homeowners because we said we we said that we would invite the homeowners every step of the way, and we intend to keep that promise. All righty. Um, so, I have the committee meeting and notes and minutes. What? So that, that, that just says here, but that, then there's Laddock. So okay. it's just information. It's yeah, it's information. Uh, yeah. The last thing I'd like to bring to your attention is a, a letter that we received from a customer on Ion Water. It's in the back of your packet. Is it a nice letter? It's Very nice me, letter. I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. Had some I, I, I thought you were. No, I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, I wanted to comment, and I had something, thank you, Holly, about the minutes, the Laddock minutes. But is the, that the time to go now for that? Okay. Um, so, and, and I didn't introduce myself. I'm Tony Norton. I'm the chair of the LADOS, and um, I'm a resident of um, Belton, Montpico. So, um, Deborah Lowen could not be here tonight, but she did bring to my attention that um, she'd like to have the um, minutes amended for our last meeting, and that was on August 27th. And, um, and, and I, I, you know, I understand what you're saying, Holly, that we can, um, Look, it's wonderful that you can go and listen to the minutes, but we've had, as everybody knows, the Laddock had, had, has had issues in the past and um, the, with previous boards. We have a great relationship with the current board. We really appreciate all the support we receive, but we're really working on trying to help our, um, well, help get our, our reputation, you know, um, corrected from the previous, mm -hmm. from, um, from the feelings of previous boards. So that's why um, Deb felt that these were important, important points, and there were just three. The first was item F, um, and it was about that Brown Act thing. Um, it had just said in the minutes that um, it only mentioned that that, that I wanted to have, that Tony Norton said that the committee, um, we, that we wanted to have the Brown Act revised, just like we, like, like we mentioned earlier. But it doesn't say anything about our request that we, um, that Rick get in touch with Mr. Timoney um, of the SDMRA um, organization and ask for his expert opinion. So she wanted that put in there and explain that he had said in the Brown Act training that it wouldn't apply to us. So we just want that added, and then late, we'll discuss it at our next regular meeting and explain what happened, and so that the record will be straight. We just don't want to appear that we're being trying to um, bypass rules and have ourselves in you know, be. And so we'd like to have that added into the um, change in the minutes, and I can send you this. I think Rick has the email from Deb. I do have an email from Deb who received okay. it today. So she gave it to me and yes, just asked me to bring this up. And then the second one was item E. We'd like a, she'd like acknowledgement that staff agreed to add the quarterly assessment district report and finance summaries to the board agenda, um, starting with the September 19th packet. And that, um, that's, that's great that, that you did it. 
We just want it in the minutes so it'll be on record. And then the third thing was, please add, and this is really an important one, please add to um, item D, discussion of tank sizes. Um, remember, Rick, that there were, um, it, you had made in your report in the, that you gave us incorrect volume sizes, so it appeared mm -hmm. as if um, the changes you were making were going to give us a long field less water, but in fact it's going to be slightly more water with your new Perfect. design. So we just want that to go on the record as well, so people will be happy about it. Well, that wasn't, I didn't say that at the meeting. Oh, it was in your report, though, that you gave I up. sent her an email and I followed up the next day that I double-checked the tank volume sizes, and I did have incorrect at the, at the oh. lab. I mean, that was, uh, and I said, I, I think I said at that time that I would double check and get back to her uh, that if I had the tank sizes wrong. And I did, and okay. I sent her an email that next morning mm -hmm. saying, yes, she was okay, right, then and there's more. It shouldn't be on this So one, it then. wasn't really said at that meeting. Okay. We can say that the next meeting, if we exactly. want to get it in the minutes. I agree with you. Okay, but then I forget did not that, say one. that, that <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. It's empty. Is that okay? And you have the information if we could get those first two corrected. All right. So it appears to me that we're all done. Well, I'm here. Follow up on uh, Tony's request to change the minutes. Is there a procedure well, that we should do here or something? I mean, I'd say it's, it's a minimum threshold. Because I just don't go change the minutes. Yeah, as you pointed out, it's a minimum threshold. The changes do need to, you know, somebody ought to be able to listen to the tape and hear that the things that are asked to be added to the minutes were actually said. Exactly. Yeah, it, because the minutes are a record of what actually was, I mean, it's a summary. It's mm -hmm. not a word for word, but they're a summary of what was actually said. So if it's consistent with the tapes, then the changes can okay. be made. I understand. Um, now, this is not an action item for the board. And I apologize, I don't typically attend the committee meetings, but I would have thought that the approval authority for the committee minutes was at the committee. Like here, the board is not approving these minutes. All right. Well, they're not written by us, though. So that's the issue. Yeah, but the board well, didn't go to those meetings, so the board can't approve the minutes. Should this go back to LADOC to approve the committee meetings and not even be at this board level? until they are approved by a Well, maybe we should talk offline okay. about that. I agree, okay. it's not agenda, so I yeah. so. Because I've been but. the only board member there. Mm -hmm. And you, you're not really there participating mm -hmm. in the LADOC meeting, so Why? to speak. Why? But I mean, I can't approve the minutes. Right. The well, board can't. They I mean, there. it should go to Rick. I, we should go to Rick well, and then the Rick would have to approve the minutes either, I don't believe. I'm not a board member. Well, of the part of the body. problem is that we don't tend to approve committee min minutes yeah. because we aren't at the committees. I mean, I if there were the minutes from engineering or or uh, environmental, I wasn't there. Steve wasn't there. Director Fultz wouldn't have been there. So we we can't approve committee. Yeah, let's let, let, we'll let talk, talk offline. Off yes. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to report the approval uh, authority yeah. for the committee minutes. That's the whole problem is that we don't write them. So. Well, that's, yes. nor, nor does the board write them, but the, this secretary writes them, and then right. there's, we'll talk. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, I, if everybody agrees, we're going to be adjourned at 8, what, 30? 29. 29. 29. Thank you.